Please stand for the gospel. Pastor Bodhi's sermon is based on these words from John chapter 8. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We're Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be free? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace to you from God our Heavenly Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God's word we consider in the sermon is the gospel from John 8. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, sanctify us by the truth. Your word is truth. Amen. Some of the best advice Martin Luther ever received was from a man named John. Martin Luther felt chained by his sins, and he did everything that he could to try to free himself. He would go for days without eating. He would beat and whip himself until he bled. He would sleep on a cold stone floor without any covering on. He would confess every last sin he could think of. He would say the Our Father and the Hail Mary over and over again, but still he felt so enslaved down in his soul. And then a man by the name of John Staupitz directed Martin Luther, look to Jesus, look to the Bible, read God's word. John Staupitz, who was the head of the Augustinian monastery where Luther was, he arranged so that Martin Luther could go and study and preach and teach the scriptures in Wittenberg. And it was there in those scriptures that Martin Luther was set free. Now you and I in 2019 may not always realize it with such urgency, but we need the same freedom that Martin Luther discovered in God's word. So we turn to the wisdom of another man named John, the Apostle John, who by the Holy Spirit's inspiration encourages you and me to hold to our Reformation freedom. It's freedom from slavery to sin, and it's freedom in the truth of Jesus. Jesus, as he spoke these words, he was teaching in the temple courts. There were Jews around him listening to him, and even though the Jewish leaders and the Pharisees rejected and spoke against Jesus and his teaching, there were Jews who believed him. There were Jewish people who saw Jesus' miracles and latched on to Jesus' words and believed him to be the Christ, the promised one from God. Yet Jesus always wants those who believe in him to learn more, to be growing, never to be staying the same in their faith. And so Jesus wanted to explain to them more about who he was and what he came to do. Jesus told them that he wanted to set them free. Yet listen to what those Jews said. They answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? For believers back then and believers today who still struggle with a sinful nature, most people are content to have Jesus be a part of their lives. But to hear just how direly and deeply and desperately that they need Jesus for freedom? That's difficult to hear, difficult for anyone. But let's think about what those Jews claimed. Those children of Abraham, never slaves of anyone. Well, go back 1,600 years before this conversation with Jesus. The Israelites were in Egypt, right? Slaves. And since that time, down through the centuries and the generations... They had been subject to the Moabites, the Midianites, and the Philistines, 
the Syrians, the Assyrians, the Babylonians, the Persians, the Greeks, and by the time of Jesus, the Romans were occupying Palestine, weren't they? So for these long spans of time throughout the history of the children of Abraham, they had been anything but free. But that's what this slavery that Jesus was trying to uncover for them, to show them, that's what this slavery does. It tends to cloud us. It tends to keep things covered up, keep us in a fog to just how controlling and degrading it truly is. Jesus said, I tell you the truth, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Jesus said, I tell you the truth there. He really said, amen, amen. Jesus was saying, listen up, pay attention. This is important. Anyone who sins, who keeps on sinning, who continues in his sin, is a slave to sin. Let's think about what that means for us for a moment. That means for us, when we continue in our looking down on other people, our pride possesses us. It means when we continue loving money, greed is our God. When we continue in lust after other people's bodies, our adultery is our tyrant. When we keep on simmering in anger over things that other people have done to us, that means grudges are governing us. When we keep on lashing out with our words at other people, our tongues are our tyrants. When we keep on having a whatever attitude about God and his word, our indifference is dominating us. Sin is not something that just wants to coexist in our lives. Sin is not a toy that you can pick up and play with for a while and then set back down whenever you want. Sin is not a friend that you hang out with during the week and then just leave out in the car when you step into church on Sunday mornings. Sin is a slave driver. Sin enslaves us. It wants to use us and abuse us and abandon us in the end. Jesus says here that a slave has no permanent place in the family. Rewind about 2,000 years before Jesus' ministry and this conversation with the Jews to the household of Abraham. These children of Abraham valued Abraham so much. Let's go back to Abraham's time. And a slave in Abraham's household by the name of Hagar. Hagar was Sarah's maidservant. She was also the mother of Abraham's son, Ishmael. But as a slave, she had no permanent place in the family. Sarah sent her away, didn't she? Sent Hagar away out into the wilderness to die of heat and hunger and thirst. A slave has no permanent place in the family. So when we keep on in our sins, when we continue in our sins, God wants to remind us a slave has no permanent place in the family. Eventually, God will drive us away and abandon us, leave us for dead. So many people in our society call out for political freedom or lifestyle freedom or financial freedom, but these words expose the true freedom that we all need, that we all long for deep down. It's freedom from slavery to sin. And it's these very words this teaching, this truth that shows us just how far Jesus went to win that freedom for us. Jesus, the infinite one, confined to flesh and blood for us. Jesus, the sovereign Lord, subjected to the law for us. Jesus, the completely independent one, bound And standing before Pontius Pilate, that Roman governor, Jesus, the master of the cosmos, beaten and whipped, Jesus, the Lord of all, Jesus, the judge of all things, tried and condemned to death, 
Jesus, the one who spoke forests up out of dry ground, trudging underneath wooden beams. Jesus, the one who spoke light and life into being, accused and reviled and mocked. Jesus, the Lord of all, becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Jesus, the one who holds mountains in the palm of his hand, enclosed in a rocky tomb for us, all for our freedom. Sins freely forgiven, free from all the guilt that we carried around with us, free from the suffering that we had coming, free from the death that we all deserved. Jesus has set us free by his truth. We are free indeed. This is most certainly true. And being freed from slavery to sin, that means we're also freed to serve him. The freedom that Jesus won for us at the cross, he delivered to us in our baptism so that we who were baptized were buried with Christ through baptism into death in order that just as Jesus rose from the dead by the glory of God the Father, we too might live a new life. We no longer wear the garments of a slave. We no longer have a black and white striped garment or a garment of an orange jumpsuit. No, we wear white garments of Jesus' holiness and Jesus' purity woven for us at the cross and placed on us in our baptisms, free to serve him. And when Martin Luther realized that, the chains fell off of him. The iron doors swung wide open for Martin Luther, and he was free to breathe, free to live, free to write and to preach and to teach that freedom for others to hear as well. That's our heritage, the freedom that Martin Luther rediscovered in Jesus' teachings that set us free. Hold on to that Reformation freedom. Freedom from slavery to sin, but also freedom in the teaching of Jesus. Those people, they couldn't hold on to that teaching. They let go of it and they walked away. Just two chapters earlier in John's Gospel, John chapter 6, Jesus was teaching multitudes of people. He fed the 5,000 plus women and children. They wanted to make him their king, but then Jesus taught them that he was the living bread, the bread of life that came down from heaven. And he came to give life to the world. That teaching was too hard for them to swallow, so they let go of that teaching and walked away. Here in John chapter 8 also, Jesus teaching them about slavery to sin, just how deep that ran. Jesus explaining before Abraham was born, I am, I am the Lord God himself. The Jews, those who had believed him even, they picked up stones to stone him. They let go of that teaching and they walked away. Jesus says here, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Notice Jesus says teaching. He treats his teaching as a unit, all of it together, one thing. It's all important. Jesus doesn't say, just hold on to my teaching that you like or that makes you feel comfortable. Don't just hold on to the teaching that's popular in the world around you or makes sense to your own human reason. Don't just hold to my fundamental teachings. Hold to my teaching all of it, it's one complete unit. Jesus wants us to remember that that's a big deal. When we let go of some of Jesus' teaching or pick and choose Jesus' teaching, it's like poking holes in the Mona Lisa, marring a masterpiece. When we let go of some or all of Jesus' teaching, that's like hitting the mute button or the mute channel on some of the instruments in our favorite song. It dismantles sweet harmony. When we let go of some of Jesus' teaching, it's like the Packers trying to finish out their season with only nine or ten players on the field at a time. Setting yourself up for disaster. 
and failure. Jesus reminds us here, this is a big deal. Hold to my teaching. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Hold to all of Jesus' teaching. His teaching about who we are. Slaves to sin by nature, but objects of Jesus' love. Hold to Jesus' teaching about who God is. One God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And God himself in the person of Jesus took on human flesh to conquer death for us, to give us freedom. Hold to Jesus' teaching about how we are saved. It's a gift, all God's work. It is by grace you have been saved. Even the faith through which we are saved, that's a gift from God too, worked by his Spirit. God gives us all we need to know for salvation in his word. By scripture alone, hang on to that teaching about how we are saved. Hold on to God's teaching about Christian living, giving all glory to God, honoring God's name and his word, respecting his representatives, taking care of our lives and other people's lives, honoring God's gift of marriage as he has established it, Managing God's possessions for his purposes. Guarding our tongues and our desires. Hold to Jesus' teaching. He wants you to grasp it more firmly and more fully with every passing week, just as he was trying to do for the Jews here in John chapter 8. Why can we hold to Jesus' teaching? Another reason for us to consider is because it's true because of all the different worldviews, of all the different religions, of all the different philosophies, no one is for you like Jesus is. You can trust him. He's the one who made you, who gave your abilities and your brains. He's the one who takes care of you, who watches over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. He's the one who's ruling over all things in heaven and on earth for your good. You can trust Jesus. He's for you, and his teaching that he brings you is the truth. That's our heritage, the heritage of the Reformation. Hold on to this Reformation freedom, freedom in the truth of Jesus. Martin Luther, in 1546, was still holding on to that Reformation freedom. 29 years after he nailed those 95 theses into the castle church door in Wittenberg, Germany. 1546, he was on a trip to Eisleben, the town where he was born and baptized. He was there to help settle a dispute for some nobles. And after preaching a sermon one evening there in Eisleben, Martin Luther started feeling a little faint and a little pressure on his chest. And the bed that he went to sleep on that night became his deathbed. That night, Martin Luther said this, O oh, my heavenly Father, I thank you that you have given me your Son, Jesus Christ, in whom I believe, whom I have preached and confessed, loved and praised. I pray you, dear Lord Jesus Christ, let me commend my soul to you. I am certain that I will be with you forever, and no one shall ever tear me out of your hands. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. You have redeemed me. Amen, said Martin Luther. Martin Luther held to Jesus' teaching, held to Jesus' freedom to the very end. God gave him freedom for all eternity. That is Jesus' will for you and for me today, too. Hold on to that Reformation freedom. Freedom from slavery to sin. Freedom in the truth of Jesus. Freedom forever. In Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand.